Hi, uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Thomas Johnson. I'm the curator of performance and moving image at Dunlop Art Gallery and RPL Film Theatre. And I uh, just want to take this opportunity to situate myself uh, in my home, which I share with my partner, and would like to introduce you to Dolphus, uh, Jesse's great great grandfather, who is known to tell a story about how they hid Gabriel Dumont in the barn on their farm in Willowbunch. Uh, just after the battle when Dumont was fleeing into the United States. Uh, over here, we have a Métis flag, a version of it uh, that Jessie's made. Uh, so this is one of many that's been used over time. Uh, this is her version of it. Uh, here we have a um, Falling Buffalo by Adrian Stimson. And I think about this uh, in relation to where uh, I am currently in this region, Oxkanaka Asataki also meets pile of bones and I think we can understand why. Uh, just over here in the corner, uh, these are my parents and they are in Denmark here uh, and they came to Canada in the 1970s but so this is them before that. And finally just one last image, uh, this is a picture of the house that I grew up in, uh, lived there for about 30 years uh, and that house was torn down due to the uh, speculative real estate market in uh, McKinstis, otherwise known as Calgary. So, yeah, I just wanted to ground, ground the conversation there. And now settled, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this house party in celebration of Diptychs, UTC4, UTC7, which is a collaborative video project initiated by Johanna Householder and Judith Price and collaborating artists Seth Cardinal Dodging Horse, Jeannie Randolph, Anne Bourne, Rita McCo, Homo Monstrous, and Jeff Morton. Uh, each of the videos that they've produced are being released uh, one at a time every two weeks uh, online and in their uh, digital media space. Today, uh, we're being joined by artists Seth Cardinal Dodging Horse, Jeannie Randolph, and Anne Bourne, who will be in conversation and engagement with each other. And I welcome all uh, viewers uh, to contribute to this dialogue with the chat to the right of the screen. And we'll have the opportunity to bring questions up towards the end. I'll also encourage you, if you haven't yet, to spend some time with the works, which can be seen on Dunlop Art Gallery's YouTube page, as well as at the Dunlop's Digital Lounge and during select film screenings at RPL Film Theatre. And now I'd like to introduce Johanna and Judith. Hello, Johanna Householder works at the intersection of popular and unpopular culture, making performance art, audio, video, film, and choreography. Her interest in how ideas move through bodies has led her to often collaborative practice. She has performed across Canada and at international venues for 40 years. One of the founders of the 7A11D International Festival of Performance Art, she has edited two books co-edited two books with Tanya Mars, Caught in the Act, an anthology of performance art by Canadian women, and more Caught in the Act. She's Professor Emeritus at OCAD-U, where she taught performance and time-based media. Her current work concerns vexations of the Anthropocene. Thank you, Thomas. You're welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Judith Price combines a 30-plus year transdisciplinary art practice with a background in modern dance. Her body of work includes performance, performative videos, video installation, site-specific installations, and short films. Her performances include site-specific street actions, interventions, and collaborative and durational works. And her solo performance in galleries and festival events incorporates still images, video projection, and sculpture, merging performance and video installation. She's a founding member of the Open Action Performance Collective, Price lives in Victoria, BC, and is retired from teaching post-secondary courses in time-based art. And so, yeah, pleasure to have you both here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, hi, I'm Judith, as Thomas just said. I live and work here. On, I'm an uninvited guest here on the unceded territorial lands of the Lekwungen, Esquimalt, Songhees, and Wassanek peoples. And I thank them for their generosity. Thanks, Judy. Um, it's great to be here with you again in our parallel windows. 
Um, I'm beaming to you from Takaranto, uh, Treaty 13 territory. And I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on an aspect, uh, one of the aspects of the indigenous, well, the history of these environs uh, that is really meaningful to me personally. And that is the heritage of the covenant of the dish with one spoon which was a covenant that uh, bound the peoples around the Great Lakes to share in the resources of the region. And to share means to me to collaborate. And um, this idea of collaboration, I'm honored <laughs> to continue. Um, and I'm honored to have been able to collaborate with Judy over a couple of years we've been doing this yeah. and with Thomas. And I wanna thank Thomas and Eric, who's in the background and also Alyssa and all the folks at the Dunlop for making this possible. Um, but I'm especially honored to have been able to collaborate with the six uh, sound artists that we, Judy and I brought into this project at a certain point. And the three, especially the three artists who are here tonight, Seth, Cardinal, Dodging Horse, uh, Jeannie Randolph and Anne Bourne. And you're gonna hear from each one of them in turn um, throughout the night and see clips. Um, so, but I just wanted to kind of start off with a little bit of a background to the project as a whole. Um, Jeannie and I started collaborating really during the, Jeannie, Judy, <laughs> sorry, Judy, oh, Judy and I started collaborating uh, during the first hard lockdown um, in 2020. Um, we already had a kind of conversational um, Zoom relationship, mm -hmm. but we were quickly kind of got tired of that relationship and decided to uh, start to explore and experiment with the uh, architectures that we were encountering um, in our houses and in our bone houses, that is to say our bodies, our bone house, and um, so we were exploring different aspects of our relationships to our environments. And I'm going down now to the basement, which is a territory that we didn't actually explore in these videos very much, but that we're going to address tonight, partly because uh, you know, the basement is really kind of known as the unconscious of the of the psyche. Uh, so we're down here in our unconscious, in our stream of conscious uh, kind of collaborative space. And um, so we had started to make, uh, well, we were recording our experimentations, but without any intention of making them into video. Um, and then in the fall, there started to be calls to coming out for COVID, you know, lockdown projects. And we had hundreds, well, maybe not hundreds, but tens of hours recorded of our own experimentations. And then Judy started to form those into um, pieces and, um, and then, yeah, Judy, take it from there. Yeah, well, we um, we became really fascinated because we were sitting looking at ourselves um, with everything around us, like everyone else was on Zoom, um, and thinking, "Wow, you know, this is really kind of cinematic because it's a, it's a flat screen, and here we are with this mise en scène around us." And why don't we explore this further? We have we have houses that have architect that are architecture. And so we started trying to do things like match up doorways and match up DVD shelves and, and just wander around our houses up into the bedroom, even the bathroom at one point and um, into the living rooms and, and uh, 
did realize that that this was a really kind of um, it was a living thing. It was like it, it taking this flap screen thing beyond the the edge of the frame by by all of the things that we were doing by passing things back and forth and and and, and then we realized that we were happy with the with the visuals that we were getting and there were like probably 20 at least 20 episodes um and um but we realized that when we when we listened to ourselves talking <laughs> We were so interested in what we were saying. So then <laughs> we were thinking, well, what do we do? So then Johanna said, well, why don't we just ask um, a sound um, artist to, to um, merge some sound with the visuals? And we we're like, yeah, let's. So Johanna, that was the, asked Anne Bourne. She was the first um, musician that we asked and gave her an episode and to uh, put sound to, which she did which was quite wonderful because we had no idea what this was going to be like. And then around the same time, this would have been, we started this about August, 2020. So this was close, probably tw early 2021. I think we started talking with Thomas and that was when this whole, um, this whole idea of, of mar um, marrying um, sound with, uh, with our imagery really started to, to, take hold and expand and uh at that point um thomas made some suggestions about people and and we started um you know ha sort of sending going i wonder if they'll do it and sending um episodes to to um artists and and they did and they and, and it's so wonderful um you know what seth did what Jeannie did what ann did and then what what Rita and Homo Monstrous and uh, Jeff Morton, what they all did uh, with these episodes. And they drowned out our voices, which is <laughs> quite lovely. So yeah, um, that's kind of how this thing, whole thing grew um, from just playing around. Well, we're still playing around, but. <laughs> Jeannie, do you have any pickles in your pantry? Judy. <laughs> I do. If if it's me you're talking to, yes, I do. You want some? Oh, those look great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That would be. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. What do you think? Oh, these look delicious. <laughs> they look. Yes, they look really good. <laughs> they look really good. <laughs> yeah. What can I give you? Let's see. Well, I don't know. Uh, how about a? How about a? Would you like some tomatoes? Yeah, you've you've never given, you've never given me tomatoes. Garden. Let me try and let me try and reach for it. Ah! They're heavy. Okay, I've got two hands. Oh, oh, I hope they don't get stuck at the border. Oh. Uh, okay. I got them. I got them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you, Thomas. Hi, how are you? Okay. So I'm just uh, going to introduce the first clip that we're going to watch. Um, so this is uh, Smoke and Mirrors uh, with sound by Seth Cardinal Dodging Horse. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, 
Hello. Um, just wanted to say thank you to Judy and Johanna and everyone at the Dunlop. Um, I'll share a little bit about uh, kind of how I came up with ideas for the for the sound pieces that I created for um, uh, Judy and Johanna's work. Uh, I, at first, I, I think what I did was I kind of made a sound collage. They sent me several different clips. I think that they were still figuring out how to, uh, what exact order that they wanted them. And they sent me uh, right. a bunch of notes. And I think since the pandemic started, uh, I think that was my first time collaborating with anyone online in that way. And so I guess in some ways it's kind of my first pandemic art in that type of way, which was right. really cool. And uh, so they, they sent me some notes and then I, I tried to figure out uh, different things that I could do. And so I sent them this first sound collage that was almost kind of like one long extended piece and kind of with different bits. And uh, what I used was I used a bunch of different microphones to record different parts of um, like different parts of the house that I was in. And uh, I actually just got this mic before I started working on the project. So I thought I would use it. And it's a an Electro Voice microphone, but um, it, has a, it has a really cool sound if you speak into it because it's made to be really durable because it's an old interviewing microphone. So like back in the day when in the like 70s, when like celebrities would be like leaving their building and there'd be the paparazzi outside and people would be trying to interview them. Uh, this is the microphone that they would use. And so uh, I thought I would like try and interview different parts of the house. And um, I think once I finally started recording, it was, uh, I think it was like probably the spring or early summer, I can't really remember with the pandemic, but uh, there's a bunch of flies all over. And so I tried to interview the flies. Then I was also kind of thinking about like Yoko Ono because Yoko Ono has done some art with flies. And then uh, it, it didn't really turn out, but that actually that layer of flies buzzing uh, is actually in the final audio that was used for the videos. I think it's in that very first part. Um, but I, I kind of recorded it in this house and in another house I was staying in, in Waterton for a bit. Um, I recorded there. And usually what I record with is uh, I record onto cassettes. And so like this is a pretty basic tape recorder. And I've had this probably for probably I think at like 15 years now or something I've had this we drop it yeah I've, I've dropped it so many times you can like hear things and yeah, move yeah. it but it, it hasn't died yet uh but I, I kind of use that to just like record a base layer and then uh I have this other tape recorder it's a task cam so this is like pretty much the same thing, except you can record and control yeah. what you're doing. And it's it's a portable studio with cassette tapes. And what I love about cassette tapes is that it's like, it's, it's like a physical medium that you can hold. And the more you record over it and the more you like mess around with it, it, it actually like becomes noisier. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just really love how it's like physical. Um, I, I have a hard time like reading things online or uh, like listening to, even like listening to music sometimes that's like on my phone, like compared to like listening to like a CD or even like tapes. And so I, I recorded with that and I use a bunch of guitar pedals. Oh yeah. Oh, no. uh, I use this, one a lot. this is probably one of my favorite guitar pedals because it, you can make a bunch of different sounds. I, I feel like this is like very creative, this pedal. And it's also probably the cheapest guitar pedal I have. I think it was $30 when I bought it compared to like some other, I have, I have some 
some expensive pedals because I, I love pedals, but like this one is probably my favorite compared to the others. And so I use that and um, I, I sent them the first draft and then they sent me some notes and then I, I made some alterations and they made it, they, something that they told me in the notes was they wanted each section and different part of the video to have its own distinct audio. And so I kind of took that first collage that I made and I, I kind of cut it up into different pieces and I sectioned it all for uh, the corresponding video. And uh, I know for some of them, they said that they wanted their voices to be manipulated or they didn't want their voices at all. And so that was, that was actually a, a fun challenge because what I did was I took the vocal recording, just the audio track of their voices that were in the whole extended video. And then I had the, I think, I can't remember the, the exact length of the video, but I, I basically had that. And then I, uh, because I'm working with tape, it's not like with a computer where I can like move things like that. It was like, I have to basically collage onto the tape. Right. Um, myself and that was actually a challenge and uh i i'm pretty happy with how it turned out um i also had so much going on in my personal life as i was working on this and uh, i really enjoyed working on it because like judy and johanna were so patient with me <laughs> and it, you know sometimes it, it would take me a while to like get back with like some of the alterations and then like picking up and getting back to work on it immediately and all of that so i really appreciated that aspect of working seth when we you know we didn't know each know about you until uh thomas told you know thomas gave us a kind of short list of artists that we might be interested in working with and so we looked at the looked at your work and listened to your soundscapes and both of us were immediately like yes this is this is someone we really want to work with. This is such an interesting approach to sound. And I was so um, so moved by your dedication that to your great grandmother's house where you recorded the work. Um, and that was something that really drew us to your process as well was you you had explored a lot of your uh, your house, you know, and the places mm -hmm. where you were sonically as well as, uh, with your own videos. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, we were really moved by the, by the, that video of, of you in the house, maybe around that, that it was, yeah, it was so haunting. So, yeah, yeah, so where did you actually end up recording? Tell, tell us about that. Uh, I actually ended up recording the majority of it upstairs in my living room which right. isn't as interesting looking as here. <laughs> and what I did was I, like, I, I have all my music gear in this room, but sometimes I feel like uh, it, it's almost like when you're working on art and even in your studio, you work on something and then you just need to like move to another room or like yeah. go sit somewhere else. And so uh, I moved my tape recorder and I sat in my living room and I just brought a couple pedals and uh, the, the guitar. The majority of it, the instrumentation, like the only instrument, actual instrument that I used was this guitar. And uh, I had just gotten this guitar. I like got rid of a bunch of gear and I found one of my dream guitars. Like this is an old uh, Fender Jazzmaster. Oh, and I, I, I had just gotten it and I hadn't used it. And so I, I found like working on this project as like, I'm gonna use this instrument and I'm gonna like try and understand what its own voice is as well while I'm working on this. And so like some of my other instruments, my other guitars, I know if I want a specific sound, I know what to do. But for this one, it was a lot of discovering. And I think that's kind of like what this project was, was just yeah. like, discovering mm -hmm. what to do and, uh, what worked with the video. And so that, I think in the clip that they showed earlier, there's that kind of like, it almost sounds like a, some other type of like wind instrument or something that like 
Yep. 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 And that was that was just like strumming on this uh, in my living room and playing around with it. And I I was like, this sounds cool. <laughs> I, I think that they're gonna like it. I think that it. Uh, I think in your notes you talked about like portals and like transporting to different spaces. So I was like, this kind of sounds like that. You know, this sound has that element of uh, travel to it. And so, you know, even though I'm in my living room and I'm here, it's kind of like imagining what yes. the space in your own videos, uh, what that sounded like or what your movements and all those. So uh, yeah. I, I worked a lot with this, but besides the guitar, it was uh, recording vacuums, like vac vacuuming the living room. Yes. I even recorded uh, my refrigerator. And so things. <laughs> Kind of, I always like bringing my house into like my sound art, and yeah, it, yeah. it fits perfectly it with it. what you folks wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Where are you? Where are you now? I mean, not uh, not in your music room, or but you're in Calgary. <laughs> uh, you're outside yeah. of Calgary. I, I'm located just outside of Calgary. I'm on the Sutuna Nation Reserve. Uh, that's where I grew up with my mom and my grandma. They actually just live right next door to me. So uh, they also end up a lot in my artwork and my sound art because they're next door. And I'm like, hey, can, can I take photos of you? Or can I can I record you? And they're like, OK, sure. They're always down to help. So that's, that's where I'm located. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Seth. Yeah, thank you so much for having me be a part of this. I'm excited to listen to uh, what the other speakers have to it's say. It's interesting, you know, you were one of the first people we decided that we wanted to work with, and yet, like, our our collaboration took took the whole year, and I think that was really important. Yeah. Um, and also, I just wanted to say something about the title, Smoke and Mirrors, uh, which we left that left in because mm -hmm. um at the time uh summer 2021 was were wildfires in california and judy and victoria was getting the smoke from those fires so we wanted to leave that tiny bit of audio in just so we could reference that mm -hmm. time period um and also what was happening outside of our doors as well as inside so yeah I, I really appreciated that this. yeah yeah I, I really appreciated that uh like collaborating on it and in your notes and um, i i really like paying attention to small details in my own work and i really appreciated that you know there's specific uh vote like uh lines that you spoke that you wanted clear you wanted you know in the front with the audio and I, I really appreciated that because I was like, you know, uh, it was a fun challenge to make sure that I could help and like respect what you wanted and, you know, that you respected uh, how I approached the work and yeah. I, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'll introduce the, the next clip now. Um, this is episodes three and eight with sound by Jeannie Randolph. Nobody knows except the clothes. We don't work. We don't work. Work's a word. Work's a word. A human word. A horrible human word. We don't know. We don't know. We don't work. We know we're not alienated from our labor. We're not alienated from our neighbor. We're not alienated, we're not alienated, we're not, we're not alienated from our labor. We don't work, we don't work like humans do. We don't need to work. The humans have a word. The humans have a word called work. The humans have a word called work. Oh, we're happy. Happy, happy crows, we're happy, happy crows, but no one knows. We know, we know, but none of the humans know. The humans only hear the caw, the caw. The humans only know the caw. They don't know behind the caw. Yes. 
Hi, Jeannie. Howdy. Good to be here. Are you in your basement? No, I'm in bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my jammies on and I have a big glass of bourbon here. All right. <laughs> Now, what do you want to know? Should I introduce myself a bit? Please do. Okay. Well, what can I say? Um, uh, I've been um, writing, performing, and uh, uh, making art of various types of photo text, blah, 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 for 40 years. Um, and I intend to just keep on going until somebody shoots me. I love it. And I want to say uh, I've been I was uh, based in Winnipeg for the last 20 years. I just moved to Waterloo and I want to read about uh, make this statement about Waterloo first that I uh, researched. Waterloo is the territory on which the uh, Haudenosaunee, Ashinaabe and neutral people lived for one 11,000 years until. In the early 1800s, their trust and confusion was exploited by deceitful, profit-lusting government men. That's where I'm living now, on uh, that kind of uh, questionable uh, dealings in terms of territory. Uh, so I, I'm, I was really honored, and actually it felt very poignant that Joanna a fellow West Virginian, I believe. Yeah, that's uh, were right. You born in, were you born in the Monongahela River Hospital? No, no. I, was, I was born in Alabama. Oh, it was Alabama, was it? Oh, okay. I grew, right. up, I grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, you I grew up. Well, I was born there and you grew up there. Yeah, a horrible place, just horrible. Yeah, Um yeah. pit. But I... I, I felt very poignant that, that you had invited me and that you have your comrade, Judy, that you've been working with and thinking with uh, all this time in this uh, uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, so, well, it turns out uh, it's a really wonderful coincidence uh, in my imagination that y'all asked me to do or let me uh, do the sound for the crows because I am a bird watcher, uh, and and so every minute feather twi uh, twist and turn on a bird is excitement to me. Uh, so I was very glad. Uh, however, the uh, the fact that those were birds was in a way coincidental. You know, during the thing that fascinates me, and this is personal as well as statistical. When I was given permission or ordered not to come into the office anymore, but to work from home on the telephone, uh, like millions of people, I realized I fucking hate going to work. <laughs> this, is, this is a real uh, imposition on my style to have to get up in the morning uh, at a chosen hour. Mind you, I could choose the hour, but still, it was an hour. And have to put on fancy clothes. Mind you, I, I, I shop at the Giant Tiger. Good bargains there. Uh, and since I wear the same outfit every day, you don't even know whether I've changed it or not. But still, I had to put on an outfit. Now, I was appreciative. I could walk to work. That's very good for the heart. No problem there. What I realized I despised about going into work, I had to be nice to the other people in the office. <laughs> that was very tiring. I am a superb actress when called upon. Mm -hmm. So I was supremely nice. Year after year after year, the pandemic was a godsend. I didn't have to go into work anymore. And then 
as we have all uh, skimmed over by whatever medium we're paying attention to, it turns out millions of people realize they hate their jobs. Yeah. The, they realize their jobs were sucking the gizzard right out of them. And that now when they're only alone with their job at home with none of the uh, distraction and uh, background noise of all that goes on in whatever job they have, a lot of people, mostly it's office workers who find it very hard, it seems, find it very hard to realize that their work is essential and meaningful. So they're quitting in droves they're having existential crises up the yin yang. And uh, I would have to say what they've discovered is that the system of the socioeconomic system uh, that keeps uh, our society running is dependent on people being alienated from their labor. Yeah. But it's dependent on people not knowing they're alienated from their labor. And thinking this is normal. And then the pandemic changed all that. So, of course, I thought those, this is wonderful. I'm going to have these birds, these crows in your video, spouting yep. off and pontificating in a very sly way, as only an animal can do, pontificating my Marxist views in a delightfully innocent way. Perhaps even a little tipsy. We don't know just how tipsy crows can get. <laughs> anyway, so that was the reason that I uh, started singing that way as the background for your video. I, I thought it was only supposed to be X number of minutes, and I couldn't read the, the dial or whatever that damn ticker is on the garage <laughs> band, so I was just singing away. Uh, I think it was uh, it was too long, wasn't it? I, I don't know. I think I sent you more than you'd ever want to hear. That's okay. We just cut the middle out. Oh, okay. But I knew you could cut and chop. I but knew you could it. cut. <laughs> we loved it. Uh, you gave us lots to work, with, so that was thank great. You. Thank you. Uh, well, I uh, it's the closest I've ever come to being in a trance or being. Uh, or, or uh, close as I've ever come to having uh, a, a personality uh, change uh, oh. I've been into a, a bird. Um, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by the, uh, the effect it had on me of, of producing something for you all uh, that you've been so dedicated for so long to this project. And um, I can only say, that was my motivation. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've never, uh, uh, I've never done the, the background for uh, a pr production like that before, and I did had no idea how it easy it is. You just sit there and start blabbing. I had no idea. And your recording quality. So uh, thank you for facilitating. <laughs> you know what? It was, oh, where's it go? It's uh, really hypnotic. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure I was in a trance. Yeah, it sounded. It, the I'm whole sure thing I is know. really hypnotic. Yeah. Yeah, I have to. I have to tell I you that uh, that uh, my partner Angelo shared the video with some of his coworkers, and then later on in the day, he heard one of them down the hall singing happy happy crows happy to be a crow <laughs> so, oh, that was hard. <laughs> it, it just was yeah um, i think workers of the world unite with the crows is the basic yeah. message underlying and very also, I think you really got under, I mean, we've worked with the crows in other circumstances. And so they oh, kind yeah. of come out of 
perhaps left field in in this particular series of videos but but you're thinking through and kind of nailing i think our perspective on the crows which is that they are actually superior beings they've been here 50 million years longer than we have um yes i know we're wearing masks and blah 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 <laughs> they're crows and uh um they're just kind of waiting for us to finally like get out of town get out of their faces or evolve into something better than we are now and i hear them kind of <laughs> drumming their talons on the branch and going, i wish these hominids would get it together um <clears throat> and start dismantling the ta you know the skyscrapers that kill so many of us and etc so um yeah, so there thank was you for really yeah. getting into that um, zone because yeah. that's that's the zone that we um, it, it celebrate. The whole thing into it. Sorry, Judy, what? Oh, I pulled the whole thing together in it into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the perfect, the perfect thing. Well, that well that, that, that's exciting, and and uh, the, and, the, and the you had a vision that. Uh, Sorry, you had a previous uh, uh, performance uh, as a rapper, no? Uh, uh, not performance, but uh, uh, iter iteration. Well, uh, I, I don't know. Well, I was uh, briefly and happily, in fact, it was a pinnacle of my existence to be in a band called uh, Satan's Chew Toys <laughs> with uh, the deer departed Cliff Whelan, yeah. Hassan Ashraf, and uh, Af uh, Armagon Afghan. Uh, and they they were a uh, improvisational band, two guitars, oh, and a drummer at times. And uh, I can't sing. So I just would improvise and catch the mood from, from their improvisation. Um, and, and it was it was um, it was just darn mystical because none of us ever knew what was going to come out of our instruments or out of our collaboration. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, as I said, that that free flowing, no holds barred, hold me back. That was good. It was real good. <laughs> So this fit in, in a sense, that it wasn't the first time I improvised thinking it was almost music, but not quite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, we had worked with, you know, I mean, over the, over the year or so, we had worked with a number of sound artists, more muse, perhaps more musical, experimentally musical. We really wanted a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you just nailed it. <laughs> So oh, thank, thank you. you. I was just having fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's bring it. Oh, Thomas, great. Oh, yeah. So I can introduce now our, our final presenter here, Anne Bourne, with uh, episode five.
Hi. Hi, Anne. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, so nice to see that. And so nice to hear it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so where are you, Anne? What are you up to? Well, I'm traveling and uh, in a creation residency at Place des Arts in Montréal. Um, I'm in a, a home that was lent to me for this uh, duration of the residency and uh, working in a, a theater that's three floors down underground, um, which is really interesting during the days. And... Uh, I've been asking my friends here about the, the land acknowledgement. Jocha um, Ke is the name for L'Ile de Montréal. I'm sorry, my daughter is just texting me like 10 texts in a row. <laughs> Her timing is impeccable. And <laughs> um, I understand it's a Haudenosaunee traditional territory of the Kanyan Ga people. And um, so I'm learning about it while I'm here, the relationships that people have and the diversity. And je parle français during the day because tous les danseurs are francophone. And uh, it's a beautiful piece, as I was saying to you earlier, it's a beautiful piece about, about mother and giving birth. And so yeah, intense. So I love uh, listening to this first piece that we worked on. So was that two, three years, two years ago, I guess, the very beginning of lockdown. And I, I was in Toronto with where you were. Mm -hmm. And um, I had been traveling. I, I at the end of our tenure on Toronto Island, where I lived for 15 years, I decided to travel when my daughter went to university and um, I had some uh, fellowship to research shorelines. So the sound of voices and different shorelines in the world, I guess I wanted to know, I'd lived through the flood on Ward's Island mm -hmm. and it was the first time I was terrified of water that we would lose everything. And, and I, it shocked me into wanting to go out in the world and see what's really going on with, with the, the environmental conditions of water in the world. And so my practice became f fantastic, uh, really, just to walk by water. And I started, uh, I went to Ireland and learned from a very good composer who does field recording. So I just started not just listening on shorelines, but also recording what was there and uh, learning how to record water and how to, how to foc find different focal points of water. Um, so this is something that I wanted to draw people's attention to, not just listening walks where we listen in uh, the multi-species sound field or um, even the urban places, I take people on walks, but also to see if I could bring it into my composition without it being really, um, I don't know, I'm just trying to find the right way to do that. So the opportunity to, to give some sound to you, I mean, I had seen you not that long before when uh, it was wonderful to be invited into the campus at OCAD and um, work yeah. with you with a group of singers. So I like to create opportunities for people to sing collectively. And, um, and we, we ha I had a beautiful time with you there in that big cavernous resonant space of people singing. Um, but it, so it wasn't that far a stretch for me to find a field recording that, that had that kind of singing, that collective vocal sound. Um, and I'm singing in it as well. But it was recorded when I, I used to go out to Banff every summer and, um, and work in the collective composition lab with dancers and composers. And so we were out by the river in the shadow of a sleeping, um, I can never get it right, buffalo. 
the guiding mountain in, in, in position there that you're kind of in the shadow of this beautiful mountain and the Bow River winds through it. So we were out there listening, all the dancers in the sun by the river and uh, we recorded, just put, you know, like a handheld little recorder, digital recorder in the, on a rock and, and just let it record while we were hanging out there. But when I saw your, um, your draft that you sent me, I think it was you, Judith, you were really like, like the idea of radio where the radio was present because mm -hmm. at that moment in the first lockdown, we were all listening to news reports kind mm -hmm. of continuously. So it kind of gave a dystopian feel to things, so like subtle, maybe not as extreme horror as it could be. But, but the idea that the radio is playing, and I, and I, I found lots of um, snippets of you know, various politicians on the federal and provincial level giving the reports and telling us what we could and couldn't do and how we would survive this. And, and, um, but I really, I'm, I'm a radio generation. So, you know, like I had the transistor radio on my pillow uh, in the late sixties as a little girl. I, I love the sound of in-between stations on radios and shortwave radios and such. so, but um, I mean, I so admire the ingenuity that Seth brings to, you know, what's possible with the gear that you have or that you found or you come by. And what I came by was completely digitals, which was very something I resisted for a long time because I was trying to be outside. And I made a determination that I would never record, that I would only be a performer and live and you had to be in the room to hear it. So for me to go digital... I really resisted it, but your opportunity was kind of a perfect thing because you were bending the visual aspect and experience of Zoom, and so I could play around and bend these field recordings. Um, I'm putting, like I had really lo-fi um, software, so I put like distortion on the voices, on your voices and on the radio, and just kind of made this collage of of what words were poetic to me and resonant to but not non-specific in a way and also um i don't know just create an atmosphere of radio distortion with your with your vocals but then there's when you change the shot and you're looking at each other holding your mm -hmm. Love you were trying to balance what what you were seeing with each other and behind and then move it was like a, a dance, but there's this moment where you both broke into smiles, like you were having, you were so delighted, or <laughs> you were cracking each other up. But it was just, it it was so um, visceral and palpable to feel that, that just simple joy and fun, you know, play and, you know. Anyway, I lined up the voices um, with that moment of. What, there's like a moment of surprise or something, and I put voices on that. But then when you start to go through your space, it reminded me of like whitewater rafting or something. And mm -hmm. So the river, I guess the river came first. Um, that day at the Bow River, there was a, a lot of crow sounding in the, in the forest at the end of yeah, the- Yeah, there were crows. Of the, of the beach. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many, maybe one or two, but just continuous rhythm, you know. And uh, because I knew Judy was on the West Coast and there's big ravens there and crows. And yeah. It just kind of felt good to end there. Beautiful. Beautiful. There was also you... There were some crickets, weren't there? Some Italian crickets? Oh, the Bologna. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's a few other things, too. I kind of got into that collage spirit that um, Seth was talking about, too. But, uh, yeah, one of on my travels just before the pandemic, um, I was in Bologna, and this cellist who let me cello to play, I was playing Venice, and I did a little concert in Bologna, and... Um, which sounds so exotic right now for after two years of being locked down in Kensington Market in Toronto. 
<laughs> but um, he said, well, we do Tai Chi. It's a full moon. We do Tai Chi whenever there's a full moon in the park. You can meet me at this corner at, you know, nine, nine or 10 o'clock after dinner. And we'll go. And so I met them. And they drove to this incredible park that has trees, um, you know, like Sitka spruce or something, like re extremely old, tall trees. And there's a clearing in the park, a big field. And there were about nine of them, and they, they did this very vigorous Tai Chi practice. And the cricket sounding all around them. So um, I did a little bit trying to follow them, and, and then I just walked around and recorded crickets. <laughs> I loved bringing those in. There's also a breath thing when you first start to move, and uh, that comes from the Library of Water in Iceland. And I first went into the space, and I was trying to find out what the reverb was doing. The, it's a Ronnie Horn piece, and it's filled with uh, crystal cylinders of the melted water of ice birds, ice glaciers. And um, so, yeah. I, again, it's like a, I don't like creating alarm, but slightly dystopian, but also kind of gentle. Gently know. dystopian. It's gently dystopian. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's um, an antidote, like a homeopathic remedy for fear to have a little bit of edge, but, but enough, enough that it's a remedy to, you know, it was terrifying to, to have everything end and be told that singing is illegal. I, I couldn't have people singing or they might die. Uh, you know, it was just also shocking. So, I, you know, I'm really grateful, as everyone has said, that you presented this opportunity with such a lighthearted spirit. And as I said before, your humor and... Uh, yeah, just spending time and space. It was really fun to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. I think we're we're almost at time. Thomas, how are we doing? <laughs> Needed there. Uh, yeah, I think we can bring everybody in and uh, have a bit of a discussion. Yes. We can leave, I think, about uh, 10, 15 minutes for that. Because um, I think it's just been such a rich event here. So um, yeah, we have some questions from the audience here, but I also did want to give everyone here the opportunity to speak to one another. Um, before putting you on the spot on that, why don't I, I can bring up a few questions that have come up. Um, I'll bring one up um, because there was a comment in the chat about um, um, titling and text, uh, which we found out late that we do have available on um, Facebook. Uh, not on YouTube, but I did just want to bring this question forward um, to thinking about um, uh, that idea, uh, just to give give the question there. So uh, Jess would love to ask about the desire to focus on humanized animals now and sidestep marginal folk that during the pandemic have shared platforms they created for access, but still remain voiceless. So I do, I do think that this was partially in response to um, the lack of text that we had on our side. Um, but I did want to bring bring this question up too. Yeah, uh, that uh, the idea of having captions uh, is something that is becoming, you know, it, I'm just becoming aware of, and that we didn't discuss at all in in uh, starting to frame this. No, we didn't. This uh, discussion amongst us all. Um, so we'll definitely. Think about that for the next iteration with the with the next three musicians. I think that would be something that you know Dunlop and we would like to collaborate on. So thank thank you for that, Jess. Yeah. And I have another question here, if you want. Um, this is from Carmen Householder Padari. <laughs> You may know them. Uh, do you think that you will try to transition this collaboration into the daughters the are texting in? Yes, thank you. I'll read that again. Uh, do you think that you'll uh, try to transition this collaboration into the quote real world? Judy, 
Um, I thought we were in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, it, yeah. It's a good question, actually. Um, because um, we, we, we literally left our houses <laughs> and, and we happened to have our computers with us, but we walked out the door and, um, and I guess, um, well, you and I, Johanna, we have, we have worked together in the real world as well um, in the past, but uh, this, somehow this collaboration seemed, after a while, it became like we were in the real world together somehow, maybe just for me, but yeah. Yeah. Real. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we talked with Thomas about uh, being able to present the work live in in Regina at a certain point. And would we be able to get out there and maybe we could we go in January? Who wants to go to Regina in January? Um, could we be maybe in April? Would it be time we could do a jam with Homo Monstrous who are situated in Regina and so we did start try to think about those kinds of things but uh, you're right this has become the real world in a way anyway all of those things just kept getting shoved forward and forward and forward with the mm -hmm. pandemic restrictions so who knows when we'll be able to fly out to Regina we still would like to do that at some point yeah. um yeah. And, and share some some uh you know flesh and blood space with people. Um, but yeah, <laughs> well, that's the whole pickle jar thing. It's like, you know, you're just trying to reach through the screen and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and share this, share the space. Break the frame. Um, yeah. Seth, can you pass me that little cassette player so that I can look mm -hmm. it over? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh wow oh yeah i used to have one like this i, I lost mine okay giving it back <laughs> that is so cool that you use tape and, and, yeah i love that i love tape yeah yeah i i it's just what I grew up with, going to thrift stores and figuring out how to tape over our, the old tapes that were there. So just mm. grew up used to it. Uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't really grow up having the new, a lot of new stuff. So thrift stores is where I got, it's still where I get a lot of my art materials. So I just love mm. that it's cheap and you can get it. <laughs> yeah, it's totally the way. I mean, now too. Mm -hmm. So I had a question for um, Jeannie about the great resignation and I'm wondering if you're seeing that in other spaces, maybe even like within an artistic uh, sphere, what, what the great resignation might look like. Uh, I'm not aware of it. Uh, it when in talking to all my uh, comrades, I, they're they're mostly sheepishly admitting that the pandemic has been wonderful. Um, there, they, the, that uh, the isolation, so called, can, has turned into um, solitude of a special kind, and. Uh, I haven't heard any rumblings from the, the people I'm, I'm in touch with that um, it has disheartened them not to have a literal uh, audience or venue um, scheduled that that would, um, uh, that, that somehow either losing that uh, scheduled event uh, or or 
uh, or offer of an exhibition or offer of, of a performance is not, uh, I haven't heard anyone being daunted that, that somehow, oh, thank goodness uh, that's missing, or, or nor have I heard anyone say, um, uh, I'm dying over here. Uh, I'm sp I've got to have my audience, sir. I don't exist. I, I, neither of those extremes. Uh, I, I, I think y'all have probably experienced that too. That we, we've kind of uh, a, a chance to step back and reflect and be centered within ourselves and our practice. Uh, doesn't really need that much much distraction, and we've always protected ourselves from it for the most part. All along, that's part of having. A, a, a vivacious practice is not to be too distracted or uh, have much background noise in your life anyway. Mm -hmm. No, that's, a, that's reasonable, yeah. There's a question for all the tape cassette users, Eric says. Yes, do you have to use a pencil <laughs> to rewind your tape? Absolutely. <laughs> what other way is there? Big yeah. pen. <laughs> Yeah. Big pen because it's got angles on it. Yeah. yeah. Pencil is probably the most important tool <laughs> when working with tape, especially when it explodes all over. <laughs> yeah. huh. Well, I think if there aren't any other questions, I think we were going to end with one other video. Oh, sorry, one big pen as well. Sorry, Cheryl notes. Big pens also work. But yeah, I think we wanted to end off with one more video. Um, but yeah, just before we end, just thanks so much uh, to everyone that participated. Thanks so much, Eric, for facilitating this uh, this, this great discussion and uh, everyone who's been uh, joining us for the, for the time here. Uh, and do uh, check our um, page for the follow-up uh, discussion we'll be having with the other um, artists that are part of this project. Uh, that'll be uh, sometime in March, April. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, oh. I just wanted to to kind of introduce this last clip, yeah. but also to to say thank you so much to Seth and yeah, thank Nina you and and my partner in crime, Judith. Uh, <laughs> so I just wanted to, I just went and Thomas and Eric and everyone. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, this is a little teaser trailer. Judy had talked about our la our very final video was us actually picking our laptops up and trying to, trying to leave uh, and see how far <laughs> we could get still connected with Wi-Fi. And so we just are leaving and leaving and leaving. And it'll be the very last video of the sequence that's shown. So sometime in April, but uh, was sound by Jeff Morton. So we thought we would sign off with that trying to leave <laughs> well thank thank you so much everyone and you know to Thanks everyone who's listening i wish you well i i hope everyone's doing okay out there yes thank you thank you Thanks. Thank you.